Hey, what's up, Moto Buddies? This is Mike from Taco Moto Co. and Baja Taco Tours. Today we're going to show you how to set up the app and the Wi-Fi module on a Athena Get. This is the um, ECU, replacement ECU for the, any of the KTM Husqvarna bikes. So this particular ECU happens to be for the 2020 300 TPI bikes. And I've got sort of a, a, a rig set up here. So we're not on a motorcycle. We're here in the taco studios, taco labs. And we're just working through doing this demo. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our settings here on our device. And then we're going to find the Wi-Fi for the Wi-Fi com right here. So as I see this, that's the one for this Wi-Fi com. And this is the first time we've ever put this on a phone. So you have to put in the password. And that's that this PSW number right here, that's the password. So we'll just enter that in. So we're gonna join this Wi-Fi. And once we connect here, we will officially be linked in and synced up with this Wi-Fi box. Go into our Get app, and it's gonna say that we are finding a new bike. And we're gonna click OK. And notice here, it's gonna take a few moments to go through and read the data from this ECU. So it's looking at this, uh, the Wi-Fi box. Right now what's happening is the app is talking to the Wi-Fi box, which is looking at the ECU, and it's transferring in the data, the raw uh, firmware data and some of the other calibration data from this particular ECU, which has never been into this app. And I wanted to do this, um, this new ECU, because I've never run it on this phone with this app yet. And so if you see here, it's gonna take a few moments to pull in that key data uh, to, for the first time, the first connect to your box, you're going to get this spinning wheel and it's going to take a few moments as it goes through. And there we are. So now we have this compatible ECU has been found. And are we happy with that? Of course. And the first thing I like to do is name the ECU. So you'd put your name in there. And so I'm just going to put, this is the 2020 300 TPI box. And so I'm going to give this one the name, and there it is. And then the brand's going to be KTM Husky. It's it's technically irre irrelevant what you put in there, whether it's a KTM or a Husky. Um, but go ahead if you want to be specific to the bike that you have. Now, notice here I don't have the 300, or the TPI rather, as one of my options. And so when I select Other, it's going to, and so the year... And also, one other thing, if, you, if you're running a 2020, the app has not been updated yet to show the 2020 bikes. And so the 19 is what you'd select on any 20 bike. And for displacement, I'm going to do 300. And the version here is the TPI. So that's where my, my TPI shows up. Okay. And if I wanted to see if I touch this picture right here, or the image... I could go in and I could update different um, personal images for my own exact bike. Um, so whatever, there's just some bikes, generic bike, okay? And then I'm gonna be done with that. And so here's the list of bikes that this app has seen before. And this is the one that I want. This is the one I just put in. So the first thing I like to do here is I like to upload into the app the map that you're gonna get with your box. So when you buy your box from us, we upload a, a custom specific map to your box for you. And it is, right now it's here in the ECU, but it's not in my app. So if I make any changes, I wanna make the changes live here in the app, and I want these two essentially to be synced. I want the maps to be the same. The map that's here, just for FYI, the map that is in the app is the default Athena base map. The map that you have in your box is the one that we created for you. And so to update that in the app, we have to customize it. So we're just going to hit this custom. And once we do that, we need to basically import that into the app. So I'm going to import maps from ECU. That's this top option. And there it is. So it just pulled in from the... ECU this map right here and so when I touch that guy 
Notice the first thing, I get phone calls on this. Notice that all these fields are zero. That doesn't mean that there's no data in each one of these calibration fields. All it means is that zero represents the base number that you begin your changes from. So to explain this screen really quick, across the top here, you see that these are the, the four, uh, well, there's two maps, but then there's two settings per map. So on map one, you have ignition, fuel, and then on map two, ignition and fuel. So there are four different fields of changes. Every time I touch this, the spreadsheet refreshes itself to whatever changes that may be reflected in that particular field. And these were all zero because we've made no changes there. Uh, this center section here, this is really if you have an accessory device that we are not running on our EXC and FE bikes. This is a motocross specific set of values that would change if we had a couple of extra accessory modules. And so since that is not applicable, I'm not gonna explain that. Now, this is the map name. We just uploaded this, so if I touch that, I can name this, we're just gonna call this custom map one, okay? You can call it whatever you want. And then if I wanted to comment ECU data, let's just say revision one, okay? And you can make all kinds of names. And let me tell you why you might wanna do this. So let's say, for example, you liked the base map and then you wanted to go to the sand dunes and you called us or you're sophisticated enough to know kind of how to work your way through this but you wanted to do some specific map uh, mods that were for you and your bike and you either got them from from us or from one of your buddies or from uh, whatever it doesn't matter and so you could make those changes and then you could save this now you could go into the map name and then call it something and then make some comments on there and then you could save that and every time you save it it's got a date and a timestamp on it and you could have a bunch of custom maps that you make for yourself um, that reflect all of these new revisions and new versions of the map that you wanted to you wanted to make so this gives you lots of flexibility so let's just for kicks say that we're gonna take fuel map one and we wanted to make some changes well let's say we want to make uh, some mid-range changes. So it asked me, do I want to create a backup map before editing? It's basically saying, hey dummy, do you think that you might screw this up and you'd like to have a version, a, a before and after version? And so if you say yes, then it went over here. Now you notice how it shows two now, okay? The custom is the one that I typed that in, custom one, backup, custom one. So not a bad idea if you're gonna go in and make some of those changes to just do that. And you could you could go into here now and you could change the name of this backup custom and you could just call this the master, okay? Never change, okay? So maybe I'd say never change. I don't ever wanna tweak on that. I don't wanna make any mods to that because this is gonna this is gonna act as like, as my version one forever, okay? Master never change. So now I'm gonna go back into this one, which is where I'm gonna start screwing around. So I'm gonna double, touch that and I don't need to do that again. Do I want to create a backup? No. And so I'm going to go into the mid range and I'm going to select, let's say these RPM value. Let's just go all the way across. So I want to, I want to change the mid range fueling right here. Uh, I don't know why that one's not touching. Let's try this again. Okay, there we go. So I want to change, and let me explain this really quick. So over here on this side, these columns, uh, the 0 through 100, that is percent of TPS, throttle position. So 0% all the way up to 100% of throttle opening. And across the top here, those are your RPM ranges. So if you wanted to make changes that affected idle, you would go there. If you wanted to affect change at like wide open throttle, it would be right there. Technically, your bike doesn't redline at 15. So you'd figure out what your redline is, and that probably would be, for most of our AXC bikes, that would represent the value field for redline. You could even go down to 7,500. So if all we wanted to do was make a redline change, we would do it there. If we wanted to make uh, something off of idle, now if I make any changes there in that specific box, that will affect uh, the, if I add more fuel, that's gonna affect the idle speed. So if I wanted to make some changes that were right immediately off of idle, um, what I would do is I could hit there, and that would, um, now, 
there's one other thing too, let me show you here. So for example, let's say I wanted to, so, so if I touch, if I touch one of these boxes, that's interesting that it's not letting me highlight the 2000. That must be a protected field. Okay, but if I, if I, if I hold that, notice how I can drop that down. It won't let me drop it any lower than that field, but I can play around with the RPM sections here and with the TPS. Now, since our bikes don't redline all the way up to 15,000, I could go in here and I could change these values to much finer calibration points. So um, 2,000, you know, our bikes, that's probably why they won't let me change that, that field because, you know, your bike really is probably set to idle around 18 to 1,900, and so they've just rounded up to 2,000. So they really don't want you to mess with that. But right here, this would be the RPM that is just immediately off of idle. And so you remember when that started, it was 5,000. So I've dropped that down to 2,500. And maybe maybe I really want to get in there and I want to do some very fine calibrations to my low throttle settings. So uh, if, I, if I was very picky in particular, I could go in here and I could just... I could just change all of these numbers. Let's say I'm an enduro rider and I never get, or um, maybe it's a more realistic situation, is I'm an enduro rider and I don't care what my throttle feel and responsiveness is like, let's say like at 50% um, TPS and up. And I want my very low throttle openings to be very specifically tuned and finely calibrated. So I could make these, these, these changes up here across the top of the screen and you know I'm just making up these numbers, but you see how they're all different. And then I could go in here. It's probably not gonna let me do that zero mark, but it'll it'll probably let me do there. So now I want to push that number down. So now at five percent throttle. So really, this X and Y at the twenty five hundred and the five percent. This is where I'm gonna make my first change. Okay. And so from here, you notice how these X and Y values cross right there. This is where I could make fuel changes. So I might want to drive my fuel up. Maybe I want snappier throttle response. Maybe I want to richen up um, my low range settings. I would do all of those numbers right in here. If I wanted to take value away, I would push it negative. So just for this case study, let's push these up to 10%. I want to go 10% extra fuel, 5% across these throttle openings or these RPMs. And what the heck, at 70% TPS, and that's not really where we'll redline, but we'll go to there, and I want to push that down. So let's say I want to soften out my redline, and I'm going to go 10% under, okay? Whatever. So those are the changes that I've made to map 1. So map 1, fuel. And you see how those numbers are all reflected there. Because I've changed these values in the X and Y headings, they're gray and no longer white. White were just what they were when they were stock. Green are the values that I've changed. So remember when we started, we were looking at, if I touch fuel map two. Um, oh, and one thing is notice how it does change the, it does change those fields. So if I, if I make some changes here, Looks like it may not let me, okay, there we go. So it, it, it will let you change those values in the other maps. Okay, so um, it looks like it, it transfers over those changes to the other, oh, that's interesting. So it didn't, it didn't maintain those throttle and TPS settings to just the one map, it carried it over to the other. So there's a workaround there. If you wanted to, you could, have a custom map for the first map, and then you could do another custom one for the second map, and that would probably not have your changes full, uh, carried over to both maps. Any of the TPS and RPM changes you'd make, they would be standalone. So you can, you see what you can do. You see the power of this, you can get in there and get super tricky if you wanted to. All right, so I've got my field changes that I'm happy with, and now I wanna send that to the bike. This little arrow right here, touch that. Or am I sure I want to update the uh, map in the box? Yes, I do. 
da da da, and so it's now accepted it. And so those changes have now been overlaid on top of the stock map that was already in there. So we haven't, just to be clear here, we've not changed the raw data in the map. That continues to stay there. And we could default this app if we got, if we were afraid and we had no idea what the hell we'd done and where we were, we could go back in and then we could just sort of like void. Well, there's a couple ways you could do that. You could go into your custom maps and you would just go back to that master map that you'd never made any changes on. Okay, this is exactly your stock base map. You could send that one back to the ECU and now we've just uh, essentially blown out those tweaks that we had just made. So if you did some stuff and you kind of had no idea how you'd gotten there and, and you, you were unhappy with it, you could either go back into your custom and you could, let's see, where were we? Okay, notice how these values are no longer green. So that's interesting. That means that what that's telling you is those are live in the app or in the in the box. They're only green while they're sitting here in your app. Once you've made those changes, then it's no longer green. And so you kind of have to look very carefully. You notice there's our 10% and here's our 10% plus side and there's our 10% negative. So don't be afraid wondering what happened to those changes. They've gone. They're just not green anymore because it's now been sent. Any any um, changes that are pending will be green. And so that, that three right there is green because it's pending. If I send it, okay, uh, it's still green, but once I go out and come back in, it's no longer green. Now that three is no longer green. So just little, little things to be aware of in the app. And, and the more you play with it, the more you'll become familiar with these little small you know, every app has got its own little personality, and so so does this. Okay, so if you wanted to make some ignition changes, everything, no, I don't want to make any more, you know, clones of, of what we're working on. So again, you could do all of those same things. You could change values, you can change settings, go back, send those to the app, do I really want to do this? Yes, okay. So I've made a handful of changes now, and if I go out and I come back in, and I go back to the ignition map, there's my five that I had done. It's no longer green. If I go to my fuel, I can see those fuel changes that I've made. So you're just, uh, you can make all these changes and all these tweaks, and, and maybe, um, <clears throat> um, again, if you ever got to where you were just didn't like any of those changes, you could go in and then take those values back down to zero, and that would be your starting point. So as I scan here, I don't see any more changes that have been made. So that's the changes to the ignition. Here's the fuel. I could drive all those back down to zeros, okay? So there's any number of ways that you can sort of go back the changes that you had already made. You could go back and sort of undo them, okay? Uh, what one other little thing here if I highlight a bunch and I press the button at the same time it's gonna send all those values up together as a group set so anyway I'm just clicking and being kind of haphazard here you'll be much more careful but you get the idea of how this all works I don't want to send any of those changes so I'm not gonna press that I'm just gonna go out so I think that kind of covers what's going on with the custom maps uh, the factory maps right here. Now this, depending on what bike you're working on, you'll this may populate out with a few or none. This happens to be one that's called flat. And these are essentially f overlays. And, and one thing that I kind of wish the app did was tell you what, what corrections, if any, had been made to the base map. And here, this particular Athena template is called flat and then oh that's interesting comments no no corrections so flat just means like no changes but if you have other bikes this may be populated with like sand or uh, wide open or race or just different names and those are basically Athena's tweaks as what we just did on our custom map okay we made some changes um, to the base map here they are suggesting some of the 
uh, tweaks that they've sort of worked up and come up with that they, they think you might like. So that's what you would hit here. And um, we don't use those. I don't use those on top of our map because we've already given you essentially a very customized map. And so to add more customization on top of that is unnecessary other than any changes that you might want to make for yourself, your own custom changes. So we don't recommend using the factory maps, um, but we do recommend if you wanted to customize on your own through your own creativity or our, or our help or someone else's expert help, you could do that. So just kind of jumping back in here, let's now take a look at what some of these other uh, tabs are. Now the diagnostic, if you had any trouble codes, they would show up here. If you wanted to clear those trouble codes, you would press that button right here. That cancels out the little alarm bell. You think of these as alarms, they call them. If you wanted to clear those, you'd press that and that would clear them. And so if you're troubleshooting your bike and you had some drivability problems, I might ask you to, to screen grab some of these. Now see how there's more that carry down and different bikes will have a different number. But if your bike was having a drivability problem, I might ask you to screen grab some of this some of these two screens and send them to me and we can help you troubleshoot your bike. Maintenance, that's just going to be um, to engine total time. So this is like total run time of the ECU right now, zero. And then um, uh, ECU factory reset, there might be conditions where I'd have you toggle that to on. And then would I want to restore this? Sure, why not? We'll do it for right now. This is not going to erase or delete the map that's in there. There's just some settings that, that may be uh, it's like a warm restart. If you're familiar with computers, you do a warm restart. That's almost what this does. This value here, this L LCGPA, that is a motocross feature, and uh, it has no no functionality in this setup. And then this other option down here is the same. You could turn that off because that's not even an option that we have on this bike. Okay, so that's that set of screens. And then over here, monitor. Now, TPS. This is the first thing, we probably should have started with this. This is the first thing you're gonna do when you get your box and you set it up on your bike. First thing I need to have you do is to calibrate your TPS. And so how you'll do that is you'll go to this screen, monitor screen, and this should, now I do not have this hooked up to a bike. So it's just has no data. It doesn't know what to think regarding our TPS. So this should be zero. This value at 114% on yours should say zero. It should be zero. Um, if it's not, if your bike is not at zero, then you need to calibrate it. And so you would press that. And your the zero TPS cal, you're gonna hit that. Do I really wanna reset the, the TPS? Yes, I do, I wanna calibrate. So I'm gonna press that and it'll say, right now it's telling me I'm in error, which it should. Um, but this will then return, you'll come back to the screen and that will say zero. And that's what you would expect. And if I crack open the throttle to 100%, then this will slide over and this will read 100%. So this screen is live looking at that data out of your TPS. If there's any problems with this, call me. We need to work through that. But that's what you're, this is really where you start out. This is the first thing you should be doing uh, when you get your box. Um, okay, so that's the monitor screen. And then the options, which is the last one, this right here is the name and that, for, when I first set this up, I gave the bike a name, the, the, uh, this particular one is that, okay? And these are all the other values for that initial setup. And then this screen right here, this little eyeball system info, there may be times where you're working in your app and I need to see some of these firmware values or some of these other numbers. And I'll have you take a screen grab of this and send it to me. Um, so that's the system info screen. So there is a run through of how to set up your app, what all these tabs do and what each function is. And... Um, how to do custom changes to your app, and then how to send that to your bike. If you want to get one of these uh, Athena ECUs from us, please look us up at tacomoto.co. Uh, we're on Facebook, Instagram, email. You can call me. There's all kinds of ways to get a hold of us. We're happy to help you if you bought your unit from us. Of course, we're going to give you Cracker Jack customer service, and if you bought it from somebody else, we're more than happy to help you get through any problems or programming issues that you may have. And, um, you know, one other thing, a lot of guys will get their these boxes from Amazon or eBay or, I don't know, just some of the big uh, wholesalers, and that's all fine. Those are going to come with the generic stock Athena maps. And when you buy your hardware from us, we preload them 
with our custom maps, and they are uh, incredible. So please look us up. Please let us know if you have any questions, and uh, ask any questions also in the comments if you like. Thanks for watching. Go out there and get some adventure.